I have been so distracted recently. Like you have no idea. Like I have been trying to film this video for way too long and I keep getting distracted. So I think I need to hide this thing. I'm probably gonna end up forgetting that I just put it there, but I need to stay focused. I've literally been sitting here with the lights all set up, everything, for probably two and a half hours just playing on my phone and everything because I just can't focus today for some reason and I don't know why. This case is gonna be crazy. That's all I gotta say. Anywho, what is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be a part two. So yesterday, if you guys didn't already see it, we went over um, the whole case of Epstein, which I literally to this day, it still just blows my mind. I don't know, I don't think we will ever Ever get closure on what the heck happened there but today I want to go and talk more about Ghislaine Maxwell who is allegedly his partner in crime and so I need to be really careful in this video one I'm not trying to get sued and two just a friendly little reminder that in the United States by the way I'm not defending her do not take it that way because that is just not accurate but in the United States um, just a little friendly reminder that we are innocent until proven guilty and she has actually not had her day in court so her day in court is in November and so we will find out eventually Eventually, what the heck happened and in the meantime I'm gonna let you guys be the judge but I did want to give that little friendly reminder because I do think in today's cancel culture I think we are so guilty until proven innocent and that's just like not the case by any means we are very lucky to live in a country where we are innocent until proven guilty just throwing that out there but yeah I'm not defending her because based on this I think every single person is probably going to have a unanimous decision down in the comments but like I said this is the courtroom and so I the court huh I will never get over that. Anyway, I, the court, am going to present you guys as much information as I possibly can. And then you guys can go down in the comments and you guys get to be the judge. And so I think it'll be really interesting actually to compare the results in the comments to the results that the court actually, the, how do I word that? to the conclusion of the court in November. Hopefully that's the right way of wording that, I don't know. But let's dive into who is she? So who is Ghislaine Maxwell? So Ghislaine was actually born in France in 1961. She was the youngest of nine children of Robert Maxwell. And it was even rumored that she was her father's favorite and he even named his yacht after her. She was pretty much just born into money and power. She grew up in a house, like this big mansion that had 53 rooms in it and she attended Oxford University. And her father, I find her father so fascinating because basically he was a self-made millionaire and not like a Kylie Jenner self-made millionaire, like a real, sorry, that's controversial, but a real self-made millionaire. He was a British publisher who really built this international communications empire. And his whole story is just really fascinating. So pretty much all of his Jewish family they ended up dying in the Holocaust and he was able to make his way first to France and then to Britain where he later became a British army officer. And he basically went from being dirt poor to working up to being this crazy millionaire and creating this international communications empire, which I just, I loved hearing those stories. But not everything was sunshine and rainbows because eventually in 1991, his empire's financial situation was really starting to crumble. It just got to the point where, you know, debt was exceeding profits and it just it was becoming a financial disaster and on November 5th 1991 while he was at sea he mysteriously disappeared from his yacht and his nude body was later found in the Atlantic Ocean his two sons were charged in the connection to the fraudulent financial dealings but later luckily they were acquitted they have came out um, they actually were silent for about 27 years before they finally came out and they don't believe that their father's death was a murder and they also don't believe that it was a suicide they do think that it was some sort of just unexplainable accident and they're pretty much just content with just believing that it was an accident they don't really want to think about someone coming after him or him doing this to himself but the reason why I mentioned the dad and why I put so much emphasis on the dad is because I truly think that Robert Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein are very similar they're both self-made millionaires they're both a little corrupt and they both have a lot of power the family was not only grieving but they were also humiliated the family had to pretty much auction off everything that they owned and the whole family name was disgraced during this time she lost a lot of financial support from her family just because i mean they were kind of losing everything at the same time too so she decided to up and move from this glamorous lifestyle that she was used to and move to new york city to live a relatively modest lifestyle she moved into a one bedroom and she even sold real estate to get by which later I think it's really interesting because you do find out that she had a $80,000 trust fund which 
that sounds amazing. I would love to have an $80,000 trust fund that I just get per year and I don't really have to do anything, but I do, I get it. Like if you're used to living in this massive mansion to going into like a crappy one bedroom, only making $80,000 a year, I could see how that could be an adjustment. But New York was great for her because one thing about New York is scandals really don't matter. Like people don't care about scandals. If you have money and you have status, that's really all that matters. Her friends described her as fun, bright, confident, and just full of light. And a lot of people said that she had this air of mystery to her that honestly would draw people to her. Others said that they definitely considered her to be an opportunist and willing to do pretty much anything that would satisfy her in the moment. And Ghislaine had a lot of connections. And the reason why she had so many connections to so many people was you have to think about it. So Robert Maxwell, I guess I didn't really describe this very well, but he ran almost every newspaper in all of Europe. It was just crazy. He knew everyone. He had all of these connections to all these celebrities, all these high up people. And so basically, you know, because they were her father's contacts, they're also her contacts. So she knew pretty much everyone. And a lot of people believe that it wasn't until after her father's death that she met Epstein, but that's actually not true. She did end up meeting Epstein in London. The relationship between Ghislaine and Epstein really confuses me if I'm being honest, because it's just so unclear. It's like, were they dating? Were they business partners? Were they just friends? What we do know is that they dated for a little bit, but things sort of started to change whenever Ghislaine realized that Epstein just wasn't interested in dating her. Her. It seemed like Epstein was very interested in younger girls and then also the idea of just being with one person for the rest of his life just wasn't something that he was interested in. There was something about Epstein that Ghislaine was drawn to because if you think about it like Ghislaine was pretty much used to rich and corrupt men like that was her normal and so if you think about it they were sort of a power couple because Epstein he benefited from all of the connections that Ghislaine had because if you think about it her you know her father had one of the largest newspapers in all of England so she she knew everyone. And then Ghislaine benefited because she basically got her life back and she got that security. So that's like a little bit of like the backstory of everything. Now let's actually dive into what she is accused of. So Ghislaine is accused of being a part of recruiting and grooming young underage girls for Epstein to abuse. She would typically go for underprivileged girls and basically just offer them some sort of cushy job. According to the victims, Ghislaine was charming and she was witty and what's so scary in this situation is we as girls we tend to trust other girls we would assume that other girls have our best interest you know like girl code i think it's really scary and evil for a girl to be a part of this whole sex trafficking ring so they believe and she's accused of being like the mastermind behind the whole sex trafficking pyramid scheme remember i talked about this last episode she would go out and she would say hey you know i know this guy he um is looking for a masseuse and he pays really well like do you want me to put you in contact with him? And so then they'd end up going to his house and they'd go to give this guy a massage. And a lot of times these girls are 14, 15, 16. They're almost always minors. And then he would later sexually assault or abuse them. And then if they didn't want to do it, or maybe they just want to make a little bit extra money, they would make more money by recruiting their young friends. In a perverted pyramid scheme, Epstein would pay extra for his victims to find more girls for him, the younger, the better. You could tell his addiction wasn't drugs or alcohol, it was definitely young girls. And if I couldn't bring him a girl, when he didn't get his obsession, he just would get so mad. How many girls do you think you brought to Jeffrey Epstein? Um, I would say at the minim minimum 50. That's what makes me so frustrated because you trust other girls. So if a girl comes up to me and says, hey, like I, I know this guy who's really great and they're honestly, he's just, he's just really generous. Um, he pays really well and he's just looking for a masseuse. I would even trust them. And so this whole thing to me is mind blowing because typically you wouldn't assume that a girl would be involved. But I guess that's what made her the perfect partner in crime. And this dates all the way back to 1993. The first piece of evidence that they have of her being tied to Epstein was a flyer looking for a yoga instructor for private lessons. The flyer had Maxwell's name and Epstein's phone number on the flyer. I felt quickly comfortable with her. And as a young woman, 
I looked up to her as you know, maybe an older sister type. We went shopping in Santa Fe, and she took me to the sort of natural food store. She was encouraging me to pick out things that I might like. You know, so it just felt like girl time together. She's known for using money, power, and Epstein's connections as a way to lure these girls in. Because if they wanted to be a model, he had connections to Victoria's Secret. If they wanted to go to college, I mean, he had connections to Harvard. He had connections to any college you possibly would want to go to because he also had all of the money to, you know, to buy anyone off, really. So Ghislaine is basically accused of basically hunting these girls. She would use his power, his wealth, his connections to really lure these girls in. Because if you think about it, if they wanted to get into modeling, he had connections to the CEO of Victoria's Secret. He had all the money in the world. There were sort of two sides to Ghislaine because it's like if someone was really uneasy about some of the advances that Epstein would make on them, some victims came out and said that she would sort of turn into this employee relations and she would try to smooth things over with money. But then there was other victims that came out and said that there was this really ugly side of Ghislaine and that if they wanted to leave the sex trafficking ring, because keep in mind, I think they're they're different and I should be doing a better job at associating them. There's like the people who came to his house where he sexually assaulted after they would like work for him or do a task or, you know, give him a massage, things like that. But then there was also the international sex trafficking ring. And so I guess if people were in this international sex trafficking ring and they wanted to leave, I guess Maxwell would sort of turn into this enforcer giving physical threats and there was even an accusation that she stole the girl's passport um, because she refused to have sex with Epstein. They had a way of pretty much normalizing the sexual abuse that was happening and some reported that Ghislaine would even join in. After Epstein was arrested in 2008, Ghislaine and Epstein like were never seen again. They were never photographed together again. She really wanted to separate herself from him and they both sort of seemed to rebrand. He sort of came off as this philanthropist and she went ahead and founded the Tamar, what is it? It's Terramar project, which I'm not gonna lie, I'm very confused on the project because it was just strange because it almost seemed like it was like a social media platform for the ocean where you could sponsor the ocean and it just really confused me if I'm being honest but this project pretty much gave her a global stage and she was able to get in contact with a bunch of people including Scott Bergerson who founded the Cargo Metrics. He cared a lot about global warming and the oceanic conservation and because of this he got connected to the Arctic Circle which is an organization dedicated to solving economic and environmental issues in the region. So at this point, everything was going pretty well for Maxwell. You know, Epstein had his little scandal, he went to jail, served his time, and then they sort of split and completely rebranded. And so as of right now, if she had anything to do with it, it seemed like she was going to get off scot-free. But that was when Virginia Roberts dropped a bomb. She was the first survivor to come out and tell her story about being sex trafficked to other people other than Jeffrey, including Prince Andrew. And and this was pretty much the very, very first time that Ghislaine was linked to this whole sex trafficking ring. Now, Ghislaine is a fierce person to come up against and I really admire Virginia's courage because, I mean, Ghislaine went after Virginia for a while and even sued her for defamation. From what I was able to find, I think she ended up settling and she ended up paying Virginia millions of dollars from what I was able to find, but that is kind of like a hush-hush case, so I wasn't able to find a whole lot of information on it, but I guess like during the deposition, like Ghislaine would slam her hands down on the table and scream and then they were digging up all of this information on Virginia's past and just trying to completely discredit her and like all of her claims. And so if I was Virginia, I don't know if I would have been able to do it. So I really applaud her and just admire her for her courage to be able to speak out because it's not easy as a victim to come out, especially when you're dealing with some of the most powerful and wealthiest people. You guys to know the story but I do want to fast forward through some of Epstein's stuff to get to where Ghislaine is right now but in November 2018 a news article came out just basically summarizing all of Jeffrey's sexual assault allegations and that is the article that got everything fired back up it brought everything back up into, into the light the feds were humiliated because it was pretty embarrassing the way that it all went down and so they sort of had
had to take action. They ended up arresting Jeffrey on July 6, 2019. He was charged with several counts of sex trafficking, several counts of conspiracy to commit sex trafficking, and he did plead not guilty, but he definitely was facing about 45 years in prison. And you guys know the story on November 9, 2019, that is when, you know, he was found dead in his cell, and there's so many conspiracy theories on what actually happened there. And I say all of this because whenever I think of Epstein, I kind of go back to thinking about Robert Maxwell. These are two rich, corrupt people that just randomly showed up dead. You know what I mean? And they were both very quickly ruled a suicide. And so I always think, are they connected? Was it a suicide? Was it a murder? Was it just well, Epstein's definitely wasn't a fluke accident, but was Robert's just a complete accident? You never know. And I think this just goes to show like how much information these people probably have that maybe people want them dead. I don't know. But if I was Ghislaine, I would be so scared right now. I would be like, okay, two of the most important men in my life are now dead. Am I next? That's what I would be thinking. And so after Epstein, after everything happened with him and he died in jail, she just sort of went into hiding. And it was really important to find her like even the cops were having trouble finding her being honest but they needed to find her because without her they wouldn't be able to get justice and she was missing for a while until recently police discovered that she was hiding away in a property in new hampshire so on july 2nd 2020 she was officially arrested she was able to stay off the radar by using a fake name for mail and deliveries the arrest was very dramatic there was like 25 police officers they went to her house they broke down the door and eventually arrested her and they actually found out that this whole time she'd been living with Scott Bergerson and inside of the house they ended up finding a cell phone that was wrapped in foil like tin foil and that was her way of staying undetected and I'm honestly really interested on whether or not that actually works I didn't know that that was a thing so Ghislaine was charged with six federal counts of sex trafficking and conspiracy to commit sex trafficking along with perjury. She played the role of solicitor and groomer and honestly I think that they're just really trying to get her with as much as they possibly can. That's usually what they do in cases like this because if she isn't found guilty you know for something at least they have all of these lesser charges to charge her with so that she at least has to serve some sort of time. Right now she's pleading not guilty and she's being held at the federal NBC Brooklyn prison. So this is a holding facility and it's really described as a tough place and it has a long history of difficult life and cruel conditions. On July 4th, 2020, she ended up having a bail hearing. And this is when one of her attorneys told the judge that, you know, Glaine isn't Epstein and that she's not this monster that the media is painting her out to be. And so they asked that she be released to home confinement on a $5 million bond and that was denied. And then on December in 2020, that is when Scott actually came forward and he offered $28.5 million just to get her out before Christmas so that they could spend Christmas together and again that was denied the judge just said that this is too big of a case like they cannot have another Epstein they can't have her fleeing the country they can't have her committing suicide like they need to make sure that she's being watched and so right now she has her lights being on 24 7 um, she's constantly being watched she's on suicide watch and actually her lawyer came forward and said that she's really suffering with mental abuse right now she's lost like 20 pounds her hair is falling out she's having trouble sleeping because her lights are on all the time and they're claiming that this is some sort of torture. So now I want to know what you guys think. Like, do you guys, there's like two different arguments. Some people believe that she is just as much of a victim as everyone else. They believe that maybe she was also being blackmailed or maybe he had such a hold on her um, just based on his wealth and his power, just like he did with all of the younger girls. But then a lot of people, I would say the majority of people believe that she is just at fault as Epstein is. Like they believe that she she was the mastermind behind the pyramid scheme and that she is just she's basically a co-conspirator in the whole international sex trafficking ring and that she should be punished just as much as Epstein was. I'm really curious to see where you guys fall on this. I also think a very interesting piece of information that I wonder how this is going to play into the court case is remember in Epstein's plea deal he got granted immunity for any and all of his co-conspirators. Now granted they're saying that this is 
only in the state of Florida, but on the actual plea deal, it says like the United States like grants immunity or blah, 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 blah. It said like the United States. It didn't say Florida. So I'm really interested how that is going to play into this whole case. I'm also really curious on whether or not she's going to maybe spill her guts and maybe take a lesser sentence. I sort of hope that that's what happens, mainly because I want to know what happens behind the scenes in the government. I want to know because I find the corruption so fascinating. I remember when there was an article that came out that listed all of the celebrities that have ever flown to Epstein's island. And there were so many people that you would never even expect. It was like Obama and Oprah and Will Smith and all of these people. Now granted, I don't think any of them were probably connected to the whole sex trafficking ring, but I remember when that broke, that was just crazy. I don't know, to just think of all of the celebrities who honestly may be corrupt. I'm not saying Oprah or Obama or Will Smith are corrupt by any means. I can't even, I don't even remember if they were actually the ones that were on this list. Right now she's facing about 30 to 35 years in prison and maybe if she spills everything that she knows, maybe she can, you know, argue and try to negotiate for 10 or something like that. But I want her to do that because I want to know all of the details because there's so much mystery in all of this. And I want to know who all were involved because if Prince Andrew Andrew was involved and the Clintons and Trump and all of these random people. It's like, I want to know who else was involved. Okay, so now it is time for you guys to go down to the comments and let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that she is as evil as Epstein? Do you guys think that she is a victim? You guys actually get to be the judge until November. So comment down below. Um, let me know what you guys think. Also, make sure to go ahead and hit the little subscribe button if you guys have not already. Give this video a big thumbs up and turn on that post notification bell to be notified every single time I post a new video. That's about it for today's video. I love you and I will see you all soon. Bye.